It is a Tuesday morning and work is about to officially begin at the Bongo District Hospital in the Upper East Region. The nurses and patients at the Outpatients Department start the day with a prayer session. The nurse leading the prayers wants them to pray for God to heal those who are attending hospital that day. For God is the only one who can really heal them. This may sound like a normal way which Christians craft their prayer topics in order to give utmost reverence to God, but it literally describes the situation in this hospital. The hospital does not have what it takes to effectively deliver health care. It was made a health center in 1972 and then was converted into a district hospital in 1996 without any additional infrastructure. The hospital faces a lot of problems. You can imagine converting a health center into a district hospital without any additional infrastructure. Because of that, we have a limited space with a lot of overcrowding, especially when it comes to some of the walls. Initially, we were having only a female ward, but because we don't have a kids ward, we decided to combine the two. So when it comes to the female and kids world combined. Usually the main challenge we have is towards the second half of the year, there are a lot of admissions into the world. As a result of that, because it's extremely difficult and we are the only district hospital in the district, we find it difficult to refer some of the severe cases to the regional hospital because I came to realize that most of the time when you refer such severe cases to the regional hospital, they end, up, they end up going home instead of going to the regional hospital. At the end of the day, in about two, three days time, you only hear that that patient that was referred to the regional hospital has passed away. The best and other facilities in this hospital are dilapidated and pose health risk to patients here. The children and female adults have been compelled to share a stuffy ward with less than 40 bears. This is the only hospital in this district with a population of about 100,000. Currently, we are finding it extremely difficult to function because most of the items, especially non-drug consumables as well as drugs, are not in the facility. We procure most of our items used from the regional medical stores and because of the non-payment or re non-reimbursement from the national health insurance scheme currently the insurance is owing us up to 12 months so most of the suppliers that supply with goods are not ready to give us items on credit basis because we owe a lot to them the regional medical source it's virtually empty currently because most of the suppliers who supply items to the regional medical stores are also complaining of the outstanding bills. So it makes it extremely difficult because things like gloves, sutures for surgeries and all those things are difficult to come by because we cannot afford them now. We manage medical and surgical cases combined with only bed capacity of 16. So more often we have to admit some of them on the floor, give their pressure. And the items to work with, the oxygen apparatus, we have only one we are sharing with kids and female ward. So if there's pressure on us, at least one person has to forego the treatment because there's only one apparatus for that. Yeah. Because of these challenges, the hospital authorities and residents of the district rejoiced when it was announced three years ago that a US-based charity group had donated a 40-footer container of slightly used medical equipment for the hospital. The project until that uh, we needed to just mobilize the freight, the cost of freight, uh, shipping the 40-footer container with assorted you know, medical equipment down to slightly used ones, down to Bongo here. No, for us to eat in you know, service delivery. Um, and so we needed an amount of 22,000 US dollars know, to be able to do that in getting the facility down to 
um, to, to Accra, the shores of Ghana, before we can think of even transporting it into Bongo district, you know, here for, 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 for use. The joy of the impending boost to the Bongo hospital was dashed because the district could not raise the money to bring the medical equipment to Ghana. So, um, we had looked at this quantum of, of money, which was over, almost close to 100,000 Ghana cities, and we thought that uh, that would have actually been a burden on our common fund, considering the fact that uh, and the other sources of funding, because we're Bongo as an assembly, like other assemblies, we rely mostly on the common fund. Our internal generated funding is nothing to write home about. And so the only major and reliable funding that we could have you know, gotten was the common fund. Unfortunately, there were also some you know, restrictions around the common fund, restrictions in the fact that uh, we're given some targets you know, to meet. For instance, we needed to construct two chips compounds and two number you no know, classroom blocks you no know, per year you no know, for the past two years you no know, this were the directives from the common fund sector uh, besides that there were other some recurrent expenditure that the common fund would, would also have to use the common fund to do and so if you were actually going to meet this target then there was no you couldn't have money you no know, to be able to raise to, be, to 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 bring this facility down and so we had to look out, we had to talk to our colleagues, our citizens, you know, who are resident out, you know, to see whether we could be able to raise some bit of funding too. We made an attempt, we also did send some proposals out. I remember we sent a proposal to the First Ladies uh, Foundation, Lordiness Foundation, but we never had a, a favorable feedback. And then we also raised some bit of uh, money, totaling 17,000 Ghana cities, which was far, far less than that. Uh, that we were expecting uh, close to 100,000 Ghana cities to be able to ship this 40 uh, uh, foot container, no doubt. For more than three years, the Bongo district could not raise the $22,000 the 40 foot container full of medical equipment meant for the hospital is still locked up in the US. But that is not all the worries of this district. Because of the high fluoride content here, the water from many boreholes is not healthy for drinking. The Bongo Small Town Water Project, which serves the people here, has to ration water for the various communities. There are no adequate pumps to supply them all. Azeko Ibrahim manages the water project here. Bongo, as we know, they, some apart from those who just use it for uh, their own, others use it for small other businesses like brewing of pitu and there is some to, uh, also cook food and so so due to that some they do they always complain when we open the water they don't get enough to fetch before it uh, f got finished so we, while we try explaining to them that is the situation that is how we can the capacity we can operate for now a pump cost 6500 cities or 1,600 US dollars, and three more pumps would have reduced the problem significantly. But those in charge of the water project say they cannot afford it. The system here, because it's not uh, for profit making, we are unable to raise more money, more revenue from it. What we get, we just make sure we use it to pay the staff and buy electricity credit. We are on prepaid meters anyway to in order to just keep the system running. Water and health care are the priorities of this district, but the district assembly is unable to help much in these areas because it has been compelled by the central government to sign multiple sanitation contracts with subsidiaries of the Just One Group, which some officials of the assembly say they do not need. Bongo is only one out of the 216 metropolitan, municipal and district assemblies which have these contracts with the Jospon Group. These contracts, which have either been signed on behalf of the assemblies or which the assemblies have been made to sign, include Final Waste Disposal Site Management Contract with Landfills Company Limited Youth in Sanitation Contract with Zoom Lion Ghana Limited Sanitation Improvement Package with Zoom Lion Ghana Limited, MMDS Fumigation and Disinfestation Contract with Zoom Lion Ghana Limited, Nationwide Mosquito Control Program NAMCOP with Zoom Lion Ghana Limited, Sanitation Gas Contract with Zoom Lion Ghana Limited, 
Local Government Ministry fumigation contract with Zoom Lion and 10 of its sister companies. Waste Beans distribution contract with five subsidiaries of the Jospon Group. All these companies belong to the Jospon Group, owned by businessman Joseph Sion in Japan. This is the final waste disposal site of the Bongo District Assembly. At the time of our visit, the site was burnt to ashes. The company is expected to push, level and cover the waste dumped here. But since the refuse is reduced to ashes, it is not clear why the Assembly pays Waste Landfills Limited 240 Ghana cities a year. At the dumping site of Savilugu Nantong Municipality of the Northern Region, I was told by officials of the Assembly that the company just used the bulldozer to push and level the garbage dumped here. This assembly pays 400,000 Ghana cities a year for this leveling, which is supposed to be done four times a year according to the contract. This is an old sand winning site in Ando in the Chiripone district of the northern region. The area is about three times the size of a football pitch, and officials say the decision to start dumping refuse here is to help reclaim the land. From what we see, it will take so many years to fill this pit. Some officials in the assembly say there is no need engaging any service provider to help manage this site because the decision or the main aim is to help fill the land. But the assembly still went ahead and engaged Waste Landfills Management Services Limited. In the Tolong district also of the northern region, there are two dumping sites. Both are vast sand winning pits which the chiefs have given to the assembly to dump waste and reclaim the land. The Zoomland track operator who dumps refuse here says it will take about 14 years of dumping to be able to fill the two pits. But the Tolon District Assembly signed this contract worth 320,000 Ghana cities a year to have this dumping site managed. The contract is for a period of five years. Amama Taisa is a district environmental health officer for the Tolong district. With such refuse or rubbish here, can't the assembly use its uh, graders to level it if it should go up? Yeah, when the need arise, they can do that. Assembly can do it. So why are they paying another company to do that? Well, I thought that this payment was a nationwide issue. Uh, they're contracting Zoom Lion to come in to help. With that one, I can't talk much. That is a management issue. Were you consulted before this decision or that contract was signed? Well, it was signed before I got here. Mm. And was your predecessor con consulted if you... No. No. But contracts of that nature, are you consulted before they are signed? Contracts that have to do with sanitation needs of your district that are signed either from the assembly level or the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development. Do you ever get consulted before such decisions are made? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> Me, I don't want to talk much. Oh, is it not okay? Some district assemblies have raised serious issues about the cost of the contract. The Tano District Assembly in the Bono Ahaf region is one of the few districts that resisted signing the contract describing it as exploitative. Officials of the assembly here say, even if they decide to inflate the cost of hiring a bulldozer to do the kind of service provided by Waste Landfills Limited, it will not cost them more than 5,000 cities a quarter and 20,000 cities a year. But officials of this assembly say they are under pressure from the central government to sign this contract that will cost them 320,000 cities a year. According to them, the assembly leased the land for five years at a cost of 15,000 Ghana cities and they do not see the wisdom in paying Waste Landfills Limited 1,600,000 Ghana cities within the same period to manage it. Some officials of the district assemblies I have visited said the district municipal and metropolitan chief executives were compelled to sign the contract due to what they say pressure from above. While verbal pressure was put on the MMDCs to sign the contract, Joy News has learned a letter was sent round to reinforce the need to work on dumping sites. Joy News has cited one such letter, dated January 12, 2016, and signed by then Minister of Local Government and Rural Development, Collins Dowda, 
and addressed to all regional ministers and MMDCs across the country. The letter directed the assemblies to, among others, take adequate care of landfills and final disposal sites in their areas of jurisdiction. All MMDAs are entreated to take note of this urgent directive for strict compliance. Once we had that directive, or once we had that circular you know, from the ministry, you know, giving us a directive in terms of our priority, the government, national government priority in terms of sanitation, and everybody needed to develop some strategies you know, to be able to do that, uh, we had to um, get into this, this agreement, you know, a MOU to be able to prosecute this agenda. So you mean the landfills, uh, waste landfills management service contract yeah. first came as a circular from the Ministry of Local Government? Yes, there was a, there was a letter that indicated and, and, and asked all MMDAs to initiate, you know, some processes, you know, to be able to ensure that uh, env env the environment was a, a critical priority area for national government, you know, as per the, our current national development framework. And so each assembly was expected to, 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 to ensure that we, 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 we enter into some level of um, you know, understanding to be able to prosecute this, especially when it came with the National Day for Sanitation you know, uh, policy, where we, we needed to ensure that we keep our environment clean and ensure that the waste that we generate were also properly you know, managed at the end of the day. Joy News has discovered a number of irregularities with the dumping site contract with assemblies. The 210 municipal and district assemblies do not have engineered landfill size, so some of the services the company is supposed to provide, such as leachate management, are impossible. The Director of Waste Management at the Kumas Metropolitan Assembly, John Gokemia says, the arrangement with assemblies is not proper landfills management. In waste management, when you're dealing with waste dumping, we have so many types. We have what I've described, the central engineer landfill, where we have serious equipment there. The driver goes there, there's a working face, he's directed to tip. The bulldozer transcavator pushes and spreads. Then the compactor compact run on it several to make it compact to create more space for further dumping on daily basis on daily basis good before if you are doing proper this thing like i said then you cover with light right then we have what we call control tipping you could construct a landfill but if you don't follow the processes i've described and you have the equipment there it really comes and you push that's what we call control tipping. You are controlling what they are tipping there. Just pushing to make space for further dumping. But you are not compacting. You are not covering. You are not, you are not safeguarding anything. You understand? Then two, if you have ordinary land, people are throwing waste on. When you travel, we see this along the road. By the roads that they are dumping there. It is wrong. It is absolutely wrong to do that. Because one, we want to pr pr protect the water on the ground. Then we'll put it on the ground there. It receives rains, the thing is decomposing. What is it? It will seep. So that one is not landfilling. It is crude dampen. Joy News has also discovered that the assemblies breached the public procurement law in signing the contract with waste landfills. According to the procurement law, this contract ought to have gone through a competitive bidding process unless approval was sought to use other methods. The assemblies used the single source procurement method and they did not seek approval from the public procurement authority. There are letters from the PPA stating that the method used by the assemblies to contract this company was illegal. The PPA has directed the assemblies to ratify the contract. The president of the Ghana Institute of Procurement and Supply, Colin Sapo, says the PPS directive does not amount to approval. Granted a procurement process has been done, but people are raising issues. There will be an investigation or an audit by whoever, either PPA or internal auditors or whatever. 
after the law is saying that under that even under that they can tell you to stop or they can cancel the contract but the C is saying you rectify you know the ratification is about offering improvement to replace or to correct a mistake or wrong so this one PPA is just telling them that look whatever mistake that you've done in your process go and do it right and move on with the process so granted the amount called for national competitive tendering and they decided to do restricted tendering or single source if you want to do single source the law is calling you to go and seek approval from PPA if you want to do restricted tendering the law says that even with that you need to go and seek approval from PPA so PPA is just telling them that whatever wrong that you've you've done go and correct their wrongs and move on with your this thing so it's not a go ahead from PPA so granted they have to come and seek approval now PPA is telling them that right and give your reasons for restricted tendering or a single source and come for approval or denial so if you get there and they deny you didn't get your uh, uh, your, your 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 approval so PPA will come and tell you, ask for this one, we are not giving it. At the Tamale landfill site, which is managed by Zoom Lion, we witnessed fire burning and plastic bags flying in all directions at the time of our visit. There was no single worker at the site, except a security man and equipment that appeared well rested. At the Kumas landfill site, which is managed by Jay Stanley Owusu, bulldozers, tipper trucks and compactors were busy at work, leveling, compacting and covering with laterites. This is the tipping phase of the landfill. This will work daily. You see most of the machines at work. The, the dozer is pushing all that the tricycles have brought in. Uh, the row of and uh, the uh, skip trucks are all coming in with the compactors. And so this is where it, the, the operations goes on. So we call it uh, the waking phase of the landfill. So you can also see other type of trucks with uh, latrats. Uh, we call it covering material. So we are creating access road and at the same time covering. And so uh, the ideal is uh, it should be daily covering so that there will not be flies, rodents, uh, insect vermins to have access to the actual waste that uh, we don't pay. And it also prevents odor. Uh, you can see we have you've been here for some time now, but uh, the place doesn't smell as such uh, because uh, of the covering that you see going on. At the Kong Landfill site, which is managed by West Landfills Limited, the situation is an eyesore. This is the Pong landfill site near Tema in Accra. As you can see, there is no covering that has been done. And apart from this truck which is pushing, it seems nothing is being done to cover the rubbish. The access road to this place is also blocked because the road is not kept well. And when it rains, the trucks and tricycles find it very difficult to get in here. Unlike what happens at the KMA landfill site, the rubbers and other plastic materials are flying around and the leachate is also flowing into the nearby water bodies and also communities here. There is no, I wouldn't uh, uh, qualify it as of now as near landfill site. The reason is simply that uh, per the design and how we go by it, we don't go by uh, daily pushing uh, compaction. For, uh, followed by uh, daily uh, capping. But all these things have, have failed on the part of the contractor because we don't do the, the daily uh, capping and they have their reasons as to why they don't do. But what I know is that it's not done. And it should have been done every day. No matter the volume of the that come here, they should have tried to do it. The, uh, the materials are available to help us do the daily But the, the available means or uh, equipment to use are not at hand. So all these things have combined 
to disqualify the site being an engineer landfill site to maybe a semi-engineer landfill site. The Kung landfills was constructed with support from the World Bank. The project came with equipment for the assembly to manage, but officials here say there was an order from above that the place should be handed over to Zoomland and its subsidiaries to manage. But the company is mismanaging the site, according to Solomon Noy, who is the director of waste management at the Tama Metropolitan Assembly. As we speak, the place is not being well managed. The landfill is getting full due to accumulation of leachate and then make, no, no, uh, inability to do e effective compaction. You know, every time you dump the waste at the landfill, there must be bulldozers on site to compact the waste and then you do what? Use material to cover it so that there will not be pollution of the environment. But this is not done. That is why I said the landfill is not being managed as expected. So why does the assembly not sanction the company or terminate the contract after it discovered that it is mismanaging the landfill? With our capacity now, we can manage the landfill site without any headache. There is no need to, for it to be given to any other private company. But we also don't have control over the contracts. You understand? We don't have control over the contract, and that is done at the executive level. And if I have the chance, I will say the, our current setup as waste management department for the Thema Metropolitan Assembly is well positioned and is in the position with the right caliber of personnel to manage the landfill site. Considering what is obviously a good job done by J. Stanley Wusu Limited in Kumasi and a poor job done by Zoom Lawn and its sister companies in Tamale and Kung Landfill site, it is unclear why J. Stanley Wusu was left out when the 210 municipal and district assemblies were asked to sign a contract for final disposal site management. The cost of the five-year contracts of Waste Landfills Limited, which Joy News has cited, is 80,000 cities per quarter, with a few assemblies paying 60,000 and 100,000 cities a quarter. Using 80,000 cities as an average, and 200 out of the 216 assemblies, this contract is worth about 320 million Ghana cities, or 80 million US dollars. This, according to the assemblies, is taking a heavy toll on their finances. But with what is happening on the ground, it does not seem anything significant will be achieved at the end of the period. Beyond this contract, Joy News has cited a 2016 approval given by the Public Procurement Authority to the Ministry of Local Government and Rural Development to single-source a 96 million cities contract to 10 companies to undertake sanitation services in the assemblies, including the creation of solid waste disposal sites. These are the companies, the regions they were to undertake the services, and the contract sums allocated to them. Savannah Waste Services Limited, Northern Region, 8,605,000 Ghana cities. Coastal Waste Management Services Limited, Central Region, 6,500,000 Ghana cities. Ashanti Waste and Environmental Services Limited, Ashanti Region, 15,850,000 Ghana cities. BA Waste and Allied Services, Bonohafo Region, 10,120,000 Ghana cities. Volta Waste Limited, Volta Region, 7,800,000 Ghana cities. ABL Environmental Engineering Limited, Eastern Region, 8,750,000 Ghana cities. Upper East Waste and Environmental Services Limited, Upper East Region, 5,800,000 Ghana cities. KS Biosanitation Limited, Upper West Region, 5,200,000 Ghana cities. Meridian Waste Management Services, Temazon, 7 million. 300,000 Ghana cities, Zoom Lion Ghana Limited, Accra Zone, 19,775,000 Ghana cities, total 
21,761 Ghana cities. Our checks at the Registrar General's Department has revealed that all the 10 companies handpicked for this contract belong to the Jospon Group owned by Joseph Sion in Japan. The local government ministry and the Jospon Group have refused to cooperate with Joy News in this investigation. It is unclear what necessitated this contract and its status at the time of filing this report. Apart from the payments the municipal and district assemblies make in respect of final disposal size management contracts, Joy News has discovered that in 2016, 63 million cities was paid to three companies of the Jospon Group from the central government in respect of final disposal site management. The money was paid in two installments of 44 million cities and 90 million cities. According to documents available to Joy News, the order to pay the money was given by the office of the president. It is not clear why payments for the final disposal site management services in the Metropolitan Assemblies were made to only companies belonging to the Jospon Group when managers of the Kumasi Landfill site were also owed money within the same period. The payment covered contracts in five out of the six Metropolitan Assemblies. The only Metropolitan Assembly which was left out is Kumasi. The landfill site here is managed by J. Stanley Wusu, while the remaining five Metropolitan Assemblies in respect of which the monies were paid, had their landfill size managed by the Jospon Group. According to the assemblies, the final disposal size contracts are a serious burden on their finances. They are unable to meet their priorities and provide critical services because a chunk of their money goes into this contract which most of them do not need. For Joy News, Manase Azore Arena reporting.